Okay, boys and girls, so today we are learning about a super cool artist, and his name is Gustav Klimt. Born in 1862, died in 1918, and he is known as the painter of gold. Now, in this picture, you'll see that he's wearing this big robe, and he's got a cat, and those are kind of significant things. The robe, for one, we'll talk about that later. But this cat, this picture of Gustav Klimt with his cat is so famous that someone actually decided to write a book about it called Klimt and His Cat. And I'm not going to read it for you word for word, but I want for you to see the pictures that the story is written from the cat's perspective. And the cat is talking about his owner, Gustav, who sits around all day painting, painting, painting. And the cat starts to notice that he loves to paint pictures that have flowers in it and gold and he really likes to paint pictures of pretty ladies. So the cat notices that these ladies come every day and they pose for him wearing these fancy dresses and Gustav draws so many pictures that the cat starts to think that he's just wasting paper. He's got so much stuff going on there. And so here we have again the cat's there looking around and looking at these ladies. And the thing that the cat always notices is how many patterns are in their dresses. And their dresses actually almost look like robes. Now the cat goes to the museum with Gustav and notices that Gustav loves to go and look at old art. He likes to look at Egyptian art and old Chinese art and African art. And he starts to notice that after Gustav goes to the museum, and when he comes home, he starts to sort of incorporate some of those things into his artwork. Now, the cat was there the day that Gustav made some beautiful paintings for a big um, exhibition that was going on. And the people that were in charge absolutely hated them. They said, this is garbage. This is the weirdest thing we've ever seen. But Gustav kept painting. And in fact, he took a trip over to Italy. And when he was there, he saw pictures that were made out of tiny little tiles called mosaics. The mosaics were made out of gold. And he came back so inspired. He came back and his um, best friend, it was kind of like a girlfriend, Adele was her name. He started to paint her. And instead of painting her with colors, he started to paint her pictures using gold. And he would dress Adele in so many different outfits and kept painting her over and over using all these patterns and lots of gold. But the cat notices that no matter how many outfits he puts Adele in, he keeps wearing the same old robe every day. He's a little concerned. And in the end, he notices that Adele and Gustav fall in love and he actually paints a picture of the two of them hugging each other. And the cat, in the end, knows all about these famous paintings that Gustav Klimt is known for. Now, in real life, this is a picture of Gustav. You can see him there in his robe. And Gustav had a garden. And sure enough, his cat was there, but his cat didn't really have all these thoughts like we just saw in the book. So what the cat didn't know is that when Gustav was a young boy, his dad was a gold engraver. And so Clint, uh, Gustav was used to seeing a lot of golden things that were shiny. His dad would even use lots of different metals to maybe decorate the handle of a knife or maybe some jewelry. And so when he became older, he and his brother got really good at putting gold on ceilings in museums or maybe putting gold on um, a tribute to someone or something like that. After a while, he said, you know what, I really want to become an artist. So he went to art school, but he noticed, as a lot of artists do, that he just could not relate to this, these paintings that were super realistic. So he went back and started to paint these pictures in his garden with his cat walking around of these nice ladies that he knew who would come and wear these robes. Now here's a real picture. Here's Gustav here in his robe. And here is a friend of his in a robe. And you can see it's kind of an interesting robe. It has all these designs. Now what he would do is he would paint them as they posed. Here's another picture of a lady in a dress that kind of has a lot of designs on it. This one you can tell they even like 
kind of made it come out a little bit and it has all these designs on it. These really weren't uh, robes that were in the style of the time. He just liked looking at all those patterns. And then when he would paint them, he would put all those patterns into the picture, even more patterns than were actually there in the actual outfit. And he would put a, like little flowers from the garden, almost looking like a cape coming back around the outside. Here's a picture of a lady that he painted, and it's almost as if the entire painting is a garden. Her dress is like a garden, the floor is like a garden, the backdrop is like a garden, and he likes to put almost like a crown or a, uh, just a shape behind their heads, almost as like a little frame. Now if you look here, here's a picture of a lady, and she's wearing a, an outfit, and then when he would paint them, he would add way more patterns into it when you can see here what it looks like kind of in real life and then the things that he would add to it in his own way of incorporating the garden and everything else. Now here's a picture of another lady she's got this very cool necklace on and these ruffled arms um, sleeves here and this long necklace and then here's the painting that he did of her. Now we can see the necklace we can see the ruffles we can see the ruffles down here but notice that he adds so many different patterns into the picture. He loved patterns. And so when you look at them side by side, you can see what part really was on the dress and what parts were not really on the dress. But when we look up close, you're going to start to notice that he has so many different patterns that are kind of fun and you're going to have an opportunity to do today to choose some of those patterns and he would embellish them on the outfits. Kind of like this one that almost looks like eyeballs there. Now, later on he went to Italy and when he was there he saw these old golden um, pictures that were done during the medieval times of saints and of Jesus and of people who were in the Bible. And he noticed that they would use these tiny little bits of gold tiles called mosaics and to make beautiful pictures. Some of you have maybe even been in churches where you've seen pictures like this, where the sun shines on it and it's absolutely golden. It looks like real gold up there. And it also has a, a look of being made of a whole bunch of pieces because it actually is, it's actually a mosaic. Well, he came back from that trip so inspired. This is the real picture of Adele, the woman that he was in love with throughout his life. And he said, Adele, sit right there and I'm going to paint you. He painted this picture right here and you can see how similar they look. And it actually became an extremely famous painting. In fact, you can see that the patterns in the dress here with the little triangles, he didn't put around her neck, he put it right here. And then over here with the different patterns, he made it a little fancier. But please, can you help me out here? Do you see all the gold? This entire painting is all different metallic colors that he put together. And this is called the Portrait of Adele. In fact, he wanted to show a painting uh, showing their love for each other. And so here he is in his robe. He has a robe here that has flowers on it, on, on Adele. And he painted the two of them together in an embrace. Uh, he's just kissing his cheek. You don't have to get too freaked out. But you can see that he made the robes much fancier than they were in real life, but using a lot of gold and a lot of patterns. This pattern has a lot of rectangles on it. This pattern has some big swirls that kind of come tinier and tinier. And this one almost looks like tiny little rose gardens all over her dress. He even puts um, flowers in her hair and puts gold around them. He was not short on gold. And so this is what the end result was of that painting, and it's become very famous. Even today, there are people who come all over the world to Vienna, Austria, where he lived, to see this painting. Now, this was another one that he did. He looked at this dress here, and he was inspired by it. He was inspired by the, her hairdo. And so he paints it, but of course he does something where he puts way more patterns on it than how they looked in real life. And now I want to show you one of his most famous paintings. It's called The Tree of Life. And the tree is here, 
We can talk later about the tree of life and why it's called that. But we have the tree. We have a woman over here in a very amazing robe going on. She has this fantastic hairdo. And then over here we have another picture kind of similar to the kiss where a man is hugging this woman. And this guy's got an awesome robe. He's got swirls all over. He's got this little thing that looks like a com computer, um, little circuit board or something like that. He's got little falcons in here. There's a falcon right here. And you know what? Last week I read that story to you where um, we heard the story where someone looked at the picture of, of Paul Clay's cat and with the little bird on the forehead and made up the story. Well, actually, someone got inspired to write a book based on the Tree of Life painting. And so I'm going to tell it to you now. They called it The Magical Tree, and you'll see here a children's book inspired by Gustav Klimt. That's our artist today. Now, already, I want you to notice that you can see the swirls of the trees. You can see that he's wearing a robe. You can see the falcon that we can 